So <clears throat> here we'll look at now the next stage, which is second order linear non-homogeneous ODEs, which have constant coefficients. Now we hinted before that such equations, in fact, have a solution that is split up into a complementary function y uh, cf plus y particular integral y pi. Now the y cf is in fact the solution to this equation which is the homogeneous version of this equation. So and that is solved as we have shown in the previous uh, video. Okay, Here we're going to look at what do, how do we find this particular integral? There are actually two methods of finding it, and we will look at uh, the first of these methods, which is known as uh, the method of comparison of coefficients. Now, the method of comparison of coefficients really stems from the fact that we look at the structure of this f of x. So based on the f of x, we make up a solution that would probably try to satisfy this differential equation, and then look for parameters or constants in that solution um, by forcing it uh, to satisfy the equation. What I mean by that is best to look at some examples. So the method we're using is called uh, comparison of coefficients. Um, the way it works is as follows. If you imagine that f of x as an example, let's start assuming was x squared. Now if f of x is x squared, then the general, uh, one logical way would be to assume that the particular integral ypi is in fact equal to Say, for instance, uh, for the sake of argument, let's say cx squared plus dx plus e. So it's cx squared plus dx plus e. Now, what I mean, of course, uh, when I say, uh, I said comparison of coefficients and, you know, forcing the solution, what I mean by that is, if this is, assuming that this is the solution to the uh, differential equation, Okay, the actual differential equation. This means that we will look for, of course, the derivative. So ypi dash, for instance, is 2cx plus d, and ypi double dash is equal to um, 2c. Okay, if we substitute these into the original differential equation, because remember, we are assuming that the particular integral is a solution to the differential equation. So here we are assuming y equals ypi is a solution to this original differential equation. Then what will happen is we'll end up with this situation. We'll have a times the second derivative, which is 2c, plus b times the first derivative, which is 2cx plus d, where uh, c small times cx squared uh, plus dx plus e. Okay, and all of this is supposed to be equal to x squared. Comparison of coefficients means on both sides of the equation, compare the coefficients of the x squared term. There's only one x squared term here, which is small c times capital C, uh, and that's equal to, the coefficient on the other side is one. This implies that capital C is one over small c. Remember, a, b, and c are known to us, the small a, b, and c. So there, that gives me c equals one over c. Now if I compare the coefficients of x, so let's see here are the coefficients of x. So that means I end up with uh, uh, 2 small b capital C, okay, plus small c d capital, all right, is equal to, what's the coefficient of x on the other side? Zero. Now, I already know what capital C is, it's 1 over c, and this way I can calculate d. On the other hand, uh, the last thing would be, for instance, the constant term. The constant terms are this one, this one, and this one. So essentially we're saying 2ac plus bd plus ce is also equal to zero. So what you can see is that essentially by this method you can calculate in fact um, uh, um, an ab uh, values of cd and e and therefore come up with a quadratic that actually satisfies the differential equation. Now that plus the complementary function that you found together, which is a general solution with the two constants. Remember, this is a second order differential equation. So you have to have two constants, two arbitrary constants. These arbitrary constants, once you have found the complementary function and the particular integral together, you can apply any boundary conditions or initial conditions given to calculate those constants. But in essence, what we're saying is yc usually, uh, ycf, the complementary function is some solution ay1 plus by2, remember. And then you add on to that the particular integral you found here.
and that will give you your answer. Now, there could be, of course, other possibilities. This It doesn't stop at this. In fact, um, one can look at a table of values, for instance. If you, depending on the right-hand side effects of the differential equation, the possible mm, PIs, particular integrals that you could have, would be as follows. For instance, if there was a some constant, uh, for instance, um, any constant k on this side, then you would use y equals uh, pi would be y pi equals c. If you had k uh, instead of uh, if you had an x on this side or say a kx on this side, then this would be cx plus d. Uh, okay, and similarly, if you had uh, like I already had the k x squared, and this would be, where k is a constant, of course, I'm assuming here, uh, then we'll have cx squared plus dx plus e. But this is, and, and you know, the cube and, the, and so on, and you can keep coming up with general polynomials. Now, what's interesting is that's not usually the right hand side. What about the, what about the transcendentals? For instance, what if we had k sine x or k cos x? Okay. In that case, what we can do is, in fact, we can use c uh, cosine x plus d sine x. But you have to be careful. One thing that you must be careful about, which a lot of students, which a lot of students miss, is that these functions cannot already be part of the um, complementary function. So if the complementary function is already a cos x plus b sine x, then you cannot use c, c cos x and d sine x. Because what will happen is it will end up giving you um, uh, nothing because uh, it will get absorbed. Uh, there are already solutions that you found. So these are not new solutions. So therefore, you won't be able to uh, the get values of C and D. Because the complementary function already is a combination of cos x and uh, sin x. So everything will in fact disappear and you will not be able to find these uh, coefficients. Now, uh, so therefore, that's very important to keep in mind what your complementary function is. Remember, we always find the complementary function first. Now, if the complementary function is already, say, a cos x and b sine x, then one can use, for instance, cx uh, cos x and dx sine x, or something uh, to that effect that's a little bit different, and then search for a possible uh, values of c and d and so on. Now, in the same way, we could, of course, have the exponential here, for instance, e to the kx. In that case, of course, y uh, we assume we assume uh, c uh, c e to the kx, and we substitute that and then look for the value of c. So in this way, by using the method of comparison of coefficients, we can find uh, the solution to the differential equation. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve a full differential equation. In fact, um, this is the equation we're going to look at. So this differential equation, y double dash minus 5y plus 6y equals x squared. If you were to solve this equation, um, you can, I can just show you in, in, on the side here very quickly. Uh, this is a dash, sorry. Uh, plus 6 equals 0, uh, which means that you end up with lambda minus 2, lambda minus 3. Okay, which means that you end up with lambda equal, equals 0. So lambda equals 2 and lambda equals Three. So therefore, your complementary function is AE two x plus BE three x. Now that's a general solution to the homogeneous version of this equation. Now here you have this x squared. So let's look for a particular integral. And what we're going to do is we're going to say YPI equals CX squared plus DX plus E. And uh, as uh, let's find the derivatives two CX plus D and YPI double dash is, um, of course, 2c. So assuming that y equals, assuming y equals y pi is a solution to 1, uh, we get, we're substituting this in, we, we end up with uh, 2c minus, minus 5 times 2cx plus d, sorry. Okay, and then you have plus 6 times cx squared plus dx plus e, and that's supposed to be equal to x squared. Now, a quick look at this, as I told, uh, as I explained to you in an er the earlier example, the only coefficients we see, only, only x, x squared term is this one, and here, of course, there's an x squared term, and that means that we basically have 6 
c only from this side so 6c is equal to 1 okay this implies that c is equal to 1 sixth so we've already found one of the one of these uh, coefficients now on the other hand the next thing we look at is the x terms and there you have there's one x term here there's another one here with the 6 of course uh, so this means we have basically um, um, 6d minus 10c is equal to and there is no x term on the other side so it's equal to 0 okay now c is equal to 1 sixth which implies that d is in fact going to be 5 eighteenths okay so we've got d as well and now let's move a little further and let's go to the last one which is um, sorry okay so the last one would be the constant term so there's one here and there's one here and there's one here so um, sorry that's a little light so I'm gonna go back to black in this case so we have basically 2c okay minus 5d all right plus 6e and that's equal to 0 so now we already have c uh, which is 1 sixth and d which is 5 18th so e turns out to be 19 over 108 you can work that out 19 over 108 okay so that essentially means that our particular integral therefore the particular integral ypi is equal to um, 1 sixth x squared all right plus 5 eighteenths x plus 19 over 108 and that's our particular integral now this means now we are in a position to look at the final solution to the differential equation and the final solution turns out to be y is equal to the complementary function uh, y c f plus y p i so it is equal to um, a e to the 2x plus b e to the 3x plus 1 sixth x squared plus 5 eighteenth x plus 19 over 108 and this is a solution to uh, equation 1 that we had here now um, at this point is when you will look at any initial or boundary conditions so for instance if we added some conditions here that um, if you were to solve here I've introduced some initial conditions y of 0 equals 1 and y dash of 0 also equals 1 now in this case if you actually sub, um, um, you know start to solve this problem you can apply the initial conditions y of 0 equal 1 gives you quickly a plus b um, plus 19 over uh, is equal to uh, 1 minus 19 over 108 uh, which gives you so that's equal to 89 over 108 and in similar way when we apply uh, the second condition so the second condition will be remember uh, so y dash uh, y dash is equal to 2a e to the 2x plus 3b e to the 3x plus um, one third x plus 5 18 okay so that means you will have here when you apply the condition you're going to get 2a plus 3b plus 5 eighteenths equals 1 okay which uh, means you'll have essentially 2a plus 3b equals 13 over 18 so you have that and you have the other equation which is 89 over 108 so a plus b equals 89 over 108 as you simultaneously solve these so simultaneously solving those two equations gives us a is equal to 7 over 4 and b is equal to minus 25 over 27 which finally gives us the final solution to the differential equation uh, satisfying the initial conditions uh, to be y equals a, um, sorry to be y equals 7 over 4 e to the 2x minus 25 over 27 um, e to the 3x 
plus 1 sixth x squared plus 5 18 x plus 19 over 108. That's a specific solution, a particular solution to the differential equation above satisfying the initial conditions. So hope this, um, this completes the solution to non-homogeneous differential equations. Now, of course, there's another method called variation of parameters, and that will be in a different video. Thank you.